a full seven days seven nights have come and gone since the last moment where we stepped outside of time and went inward me time I heard a stat the other day from Bruce Lipton. He said something close to 95% of the day we spend in a semi-conscious trance, meaning not fully conscious, not aware. When you hear the number, it's a pretty shocking statistic. Though as you think throughout your day, pretty accurate. It's like you're dreaming while you're awake, rather than waking from the dream. Just stopping throughout the day. Any moment where you have a, a cogent thought and asking yourself silently, perhaps even out loud, am I aware? Am I present? Am I consciously alert? What is happening about me that I am not currently consciously aware of? Can you externalize that consciousness for that moment to bring it all back? You'll probably realize very quickly, oh, I wasn't paying attention to my breath. Oh, there's someone over there that I didn't notice before. So busy up here. So busy being the personality that you've cultivated intentionally or unintentionally. So busy thinking. Oh, I'm late for this. I can't believe that person said that to me. Oh, I would have said this. I should have said that. Oh, this person frustrates me. That person's annoying. Oh, I can't believe I have to go do there. I don't want him to go do this. I really don't like that. On and on and on and on and on. Noise. Interrupting your signal. Eh, can't even say interrupting, just drowning out. Because the signal's always there. It's steady always playing. It's a bit like I thought of it akin to just listening to my Bluetooth headphones. Sometimes my phone is a bit away from me and I, I walk away and the signal, it's still playing the song. 
and then when I get closer to it, it kind of catches back up, and all the signal kind of gets back in there. But when I get further away, it's like, oh, uh, 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 you're too much noise, too much distance, too many layers of other stuff. And when we get closer to the source, it comes right back. <laughs> That's what consciousness feels like to me. So the closer you are to your source, the better the signal strength is. And being close to the source is also a point of balance. It's not being over amplified by any single characteristic of your personality of your ego it's not being too much in your masculine or too much in your feminine it's where you need to be in the moment It's not being hot to jump to some conclusion or quick to respond in a way that defends yourself. It's just soaking it all in. It's letting whoever is mad be mad and not letting it taint your container. It's letting someone who's giving you a terse answer because why? I don't know. Who cares? But acknowledging it, moving on. Not carrying it with you. Not letting it be, oh, did I, did I do something? It's throwing you away from your source. You're way off balance if you're out there. Come back. Come back. Come back. So I want to practice a specific breath work today. And it uh, has a name. And I, it might be Sanskrit. It's probably Hindi. Called Nadi Shodan. I'm sure it has many names. It is an activity that has probably been repeated in different cultures around the world. The intention of this breath work is balance. Another quote from Bruce Lipton, I was listening to one of his podcasts recently, so it sticking in my head, but you mentioned how throughout the day, about every two hours, you switch between your sort of dominant conscious or dominant subconscious part of your brain, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And when he shared that with me, and he's a very decorated, educated, scientific, spiritual man, teacher, professor. But when he said that stat, it reminded me of something that I was taught in the East, which is there's an oscillation between your dominant well, side of your brain, call it your, your masculine, your feminine, your uh, more creative, your more logical, your more active, your more passive, these polarities are all about polarity. And one of the details that was shared was whenever your nose is stuffed, 
Have you ever noticed that it switches back and forth? And then it won't. For some amount of time, it's your right nostril, and you're like, oh, I can't. It's just, this one's always stuffed. And then a little bit later in the day, click, swaps over to the other nostril. It's like, now this one's jammed. Maybe later in the day, click. Once you start to be more aware and observe, you might notice these things. In fact, yes. It does switch sides. Even if you don't have a stuffed nostril, you might <laughs> just notice right now, my right nostril is more dominant. It just feels more clear, more open, more activated. And what they talk about in India is how your nadis and your shashumna this is the call it the etheric energy veins of your body. They say there's seventy two thousand of them, and where they crisscross, you end up with your major chakra points. These spinning wheels of nadis. And then some of the major ones, the major crossings take place at the points, six of them inside of your body, seventh outside, above your crown of your head. And you have your shashumna going up the middle. And then you have these two sort of spiraling, crisscrossing primary channels that would equate to your left brain, right brain, conscious, subconscious, right nostril, left nostril. But I thought they were the same. Well, some very talented and conscious individuals spent time studying themselves. Their body. And they were able to get them consciousness to be aware of these things. And then they would tell people, say, hey, I found some insight works for me, maybe it works for you. And they documented this. A lot of this is how the Vedas came about. So they say. So today I want to go through a practice of Nadi Shodan. And it's a, a Nadi balancing technique. And the way we're going to do it today is you need to put your hand in like a, like a gun, right? And then you're going to put your fingers on your forehead, the gun point, thumb on one nostril, other two fingers on the other nostril. And you're going to oscillate back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And the way it works is you start on the inhale. So thumb out, one nostril blocked, inhale in for four seconds. Close it, four seconds, hold. Switch nostrils. Exhale out for four seconds. Close it and hold. And I keep going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Open it, inhale, hold, cross, exhale, hold. So we're going to go now and practice this for a short while. 
think uh, 11 times feels right. So there's 11 cycles. And uh, I guess if you feel like fast forwarding through this to more of the conversation later, please feel free. Or if you feel like uh, participating, then do as you like. So beginning now, fingers on the forehead, your third eye center, just a balancing point. Find a good posture. Make sure if you're seated in a chair, on the floor, bed, just make sure you have good posture. This is a, a breathwork exercise, so you want to make sure your spine is erect, shoulders back. You got to free up that, ugh, I got a little puppy in the way. Free up that diaphragm, your tendon. Find a comfortable position, erect, and then begin to inhale with your right nostril. Four seconds. Exhale, left nostril. Hold. Inhale, left nostril. Exhale, right nostril. That's one round. Let's do 10 more. We'll just keep it going. Keep it going. Keep it going. I'll let you know when we have one round left. So just stay focused on your breath. Follow along. Beginning now. Inhale.
halfway. Last round. This is a balancing breath work. Helps you to get both your nadis, main channels in balance, balancing your conscious and your subconscious, your masculine, feminine, your light, dark. What we're talking about here is polarity. After one, comes two. 
And when that split takes place, in order for those two to be attracted toward each other, they more or less embody the opposites. <laughs> I don't want to get into dualism, but the simplest way to start to understand yourself is to start looking at the polar parts of you. This thought keeps coming to me about white light. What is white light? What is sunlight? Well, it's all the bands, all the frequencies of all the colors and much more. And if you're missing any parts of those or some of those are obstructed, it's not white light anymore. It's something else, some other color. So to be all the frequencies at once, or in this case, none of the frequencies at once. This is your true self. If you're allowing your emotion to pull you this way or some desire to pull you that way or some attachment to pull you this way or some expectation to pull you that way, you're off balance. You're not in your signal. You're not walking your path. You're not fully present. You're distracted. And the world is set up with many, many distractions to keep us hypnotized in a semi-passive non fully conscious state of being so that you can be utilized as whatever it is that they want you to be utilized for probably money probably attention maybe a vote labor anything that they can utilize you for that they would prefer you to be utilized for they're happy to take it and they can only take it if you give it to them most of us are giving without realizing what's being taken there's no awareness you know, we're driving down the street looking at all the billboards Oh, that's interesting. Oh, look at that. Oh, that's cool. You're giving it. You're giving them your attention. Sure, but the billboard's there. Oh, it was bright. Oh, but it changed. You don't have to look. You don't have to pay attention to it. You could be driving your car and be fully present on what's happening there. There's a lot of things going on, but, you know, highway hypnosis is a real thing. So here we are taking control of our own attention, of our own presence, of our own awareness. Should be the easiest thing for us to do because it's the thing that we have control over, but we haven't trained our minds. We haven't given us the practice to be able to do those things easily. www.netflix.com enter click 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 and you're in www.youtube.com click 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 and you're in but what are you into what did you sign up for what was your intention going to these places Ask yourself, are you intentionally doing it? Or are you just, well, I'm eating food, so I'm going to open my computer and just veg out while I'm vegging out. 
or when you go to those websites, beautiful offerings of fantastic corporations that people have put together to provide services to humanity. When you go to those websites, what is your intention? Is your intention is, I want to learn something new. I want to find a new way to express myself. I want to feel something. I want to zone out. I just want to turn everything off. Whatever your intention is, state it. Know your intention. There should be an intention index for your computer when you're interacting with AI. It should be like, what's your question? And then what's your intention? What do you actually want? Not just, why do apples have seeds? Well, okay. Well, what's your intention? Well, I, I'd like to know why apples have seeds because I just was wondering why they were in there and I, I eat a lot of apples and I was curious if, if this was like, whatever it is, figure out what your intention is while you're doing it and state it. In this case, I'm going to watch some content because what's your intention? Last night, Friday night, and my little long week sort of blues came on and I had a long week, like an intense, intense week. And I had some workplace stuff that got kind of intense. I got some family stuff that got kind of intense. I was doing physical labor because I like to move stuff, move dirt. Maybe you'll see some of the footage of that later. And I ended it with a sound healing. Oh my goodness. And that, that was incredible. A big shout out to Timothy Mass. T-I-M-O-T-H-Y-M-A-S-T. Find him on YouTube. He does sound healing meditations with crystal bowls. Wow. Truly wow. I practiced sound healing in India using Tibetan bowls. They use seven metals into an alloy that has this ring. Deep, resonating, metallic, earthly ring. Crystal bowls are something else. <laughs> like, entirely. Entirely. I showed up late, kind of rushed in. My puppy was sick. Sophia was throwing up all day. We're going to share the blame on that. And I was thinking to myself, I'm not sure if we're going to be able to go to this thing. If you're just puking every 20 minutes, I can't bring you to a sound healing with a bunch of other people trying to find their Zen and you're. Bleh, bleh, bleh. <laughs> <laughs> we did a little bit of quick home remedy and she, she figured it out, but we showed up to the sound healing late, laid down and out like a light. Oh, start wiggling your toes. It's been an hour. Out like a light. Switch off. My whole body was vibrating. All of it. Zzz. Couldn't move it but it was vibrating in the most delightful sense. Zzz. And I came back and wow, I sat up. Oh, oh. Must have done wonders for the puppy too. She was silent the entire time. Apparently I was making noises. Someone said I was, <laughs> I don't even know. Yeah, someone next to me said, oh, it sounds like you're making some noises over there. I'm like, <laughs> sure if you say so. <laughs> right, gotta let the energy out. <laughs> balance. You gotta find a way to balance. And a lot of that balance comes from letting it go. Oh, I didn't realize I was holding on to it. That starts with self-observation. Here, we're obviously present. We're having this present moment with each other. We're like doing our present thing. 
But then the moment you step outside that door, you're like, okay, I'm present, I'm present, I'm present, I'm present. Look a squirrel. The dream veil just comes over our eyes. A phone call here, email there, someone cuts you off in traffic. Oh, the store's closing soon. And all of a sudden, where'd all that presence go? Out the window. Like the choo-choo train of your consciousness. Choo-choo. Down the tracks. Nowhere to be seen. How do we stay present? Well, gratitude's a great way to start. Someone cuts you off in traffic, it's like, well, I guess I guess they really needed that lane. Here it's yours. You can have it. Right? Someone says something mean to you, you go, Well, I think they're having a rough day. I'm gonna give them the space they need. I'm so grateful for them showing up for this. I don't need to interact with that. Someone gives you a small gesture. Say, oh, thank you. I, wow, that was really nice of you. That was generous. I appreciate it. But genuine appreciation is a great way to stay present because every day is a blessing. I don't necessarily like the word blessing, but the context is important. Every day is a gift. They say, yesterday's history, tomorrow is a mystery, the present is a gift. The more you can stay in the present moment and realizing all of the gifts around you is one more moment you're not in your head in some emotional state about something you currently don't have control over. Watching someone on some screen do something that makes you envious, that makes you feel less of whatever you are, wanting, desiring, wishing, hoping, whining, seeking something you already have. And Einstein was right about relativity. It really is all relative. Here I am sitting in this room. All of these wonderful books. Books on books on books. My beautiful puppy. Amazing. Oh, I'd rather be on a beach somewhere. I'd rather be hanging out with this chick. I'd rather be doing that. I'd rather have a big house. I'd rather have a nice car. Like. Why? Why? There's something inside of you that's driving that. And if it's not inside of you, guess what? It's definitely outside of you. What do I mean by that? There's something inside of you that thinks that's what you want. So you go and seek it outside of you. But where did that idea come from? Is it something that's actually yours? Or was it put there? Was it picked up? Was it established by some other frequency? Was it your signal? Chances are, it's not yours. I'm just saying, the chances are, it's not yours. Chances are, something your parents said, something your friend said, something some coworker said, something you saw on TV, something you saw in a movie, chances are, came from there. And it made you feel some sort of way when you were less aware of your feelings, and now you still carry that feeling forward every time it comes up. It reminds you of your inadequacy, your incompleteness, your inability to attain some aspect of status that... You envied in somebody else. You thought would be cool. You looked, oh, that looked cool. Oh, that looks so cool. Oh my gosh. Here's what it comes down to. And it really does come down to this. That which is not governed from within is 
automatically governed from something without. Think about that for a second. If I'm in full control, I'm in full control. But the moment I'm not in control, the control has been taken somewhere else. I have abdicated responsibility. I have given away my power. I have given up control. Consciously, unconsciously, willing, unwillingly, intentionally, unintentionally. The problem is we're spending most of our time, as Bruce Lipton said, 95% unaware. Living in a state of semi-passive NPC-like consciousness. We're here, we're doing it, we're trying every day, but not really present, not really grateful, not really aware, not really awake. If you're doing everything every single day that you love, that makes you happy, that fulfills you, there's no stress in your life because you're making all the right decisions for you, you're on your way. Though most of us don't live like that. We live under someone else's stressor. And they live under else, someone else's stressor. And they live under someone else's stressor. Where are you going, pretty thing? What what you up to? You're just you're just where, where are you going? Yeah, just go back to sleep. Go back to sleep. <laughs> when does it stop? With you. Or as you would say, it stops with me. Perhaps it starts with me. I don't need to do the relative comparisons of, well, you weren't born in Gaza. You weren't born in Haiti. You weren't born in some war-torn, warlord-managed part of Africa. You're not digging cobalt out of a mine with your bare hands. I don't need to hit you with all of this to get you to wake up to be like, oh yeah, this is pretty fucking good. But maybe I do need to remind you. Just give you that little poke on the forehead. Just be like, hey, that thing you're upset about, oh, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. I know it seems so critical, so pertinent, so necessary. It has to happen this way. Oh my goodness. I know it matters to you, but maybe it doesn't. And maybe that's not the thing you should be trying to control. Let it go. It's got to happen this way. It needs to be perfect. Uh, I need to do it myself or no one's going to get it done. Uh. Unnecessary stress. That you not fully believing that everything happens the way it's supposed to. Like this dog getting up. Okay, go back to sleep. Good job. Everything happens with its own timing. You trying to accelerate that does not make it happen any faster. It makes it bend to a momentary set of actions, which inevitably recoils back to its original position. I'm very, very familiar with this, working in the corporate world, trying to bend everything to my will. This is gonna happen because I said so. That guy is still in there, but We're slowly therapizing him, rehabilitating him to the understanding that everything happens in accordance with its own timing. Everything. Everything. And when you manipulate it or mess with it or think you have more control over it, A, you're just messing with yourself and B, you're just messing with a good thing.
So we just go back to balance. How do we achieve balance? By letting things be. Find your own center. Focusing on your state of mind, your present awareness. Letting everything else be. Someone comes to you with an issue. Okay. This is your issue. Fantastic. Your emergency is not urgency for me. Let's talk through it. Okay. Let's come up with a solution. Off you go. But jumping up and grabbing your coat and off you go running for a tiny fire drill every single time because you want to help because you want to be the one with the solution. You're just wasting energy, trying to fill the infinite void. Starts with balance, physical balance, which takes time. Dietary balance. There's my tummy. I haven't eaten today. Mental balance, emotional balance. And all of this comes from discernment, denial of things that are not yours, that were never meant to be yours. That someone will try to tell you, hey, you want this. Mm -mm. Not for me. I don't need it. I don't want it. It's no good for me. That leads to stress. That leads to anxiety. That leads to bad sleep. That leads to constipation. You say, oh, well, gotta get married. Gotta have a house. Gotta have a car. For what? To do what everyone else is doing? Are you awake? Are you aware? Are you alert? Your view will change as you travel and see more of the world. If you can't go and see more of the world, read more books. If you can't read more books, go and talk to more people. If you can't talk to more people, then sit and meditate and wait for insight. These would be my like order of operations for suggestions of how you can achieve more with what you have. Instead of watching television or YouTube or listening to music, choose a different frequency. I would normally watch Marvel reruns over and over and over again, but today I'm going to try to learn something, learn a new skill. I'm going to study some aspect of some spiritual practice or some home goods creation or something good with my hands or history. Try to write a program, try to figure out what this AI thing's all about. Maybe go outside and try to talk to 10 people and strike up a conversation. Getting outside the typical unconscious, unaware state where we just want to be left alone so we can watch the thing we think we want to watch so that our brain is given a signal that, hey, we're doing something so the body can just be like, eh. not balanced it's not balanced so finding that balance from within breathwork exercises any sort of physical exercise that allows you to practice that balance maybe you like slack lining maybe you like volleyball I don't know, horse riding something walking <laughs> just 
try to find a way to make it more intentional as you do it. What is my intention while I'm doing yoga? What is my intention while I'm doing breath work? What is my intention when I show up for Sunday service? Just getting there is not the deal. That's not it. You have to actually go there with the intention of getting the most out of it in order for it to benefit you. Just going to Sunday service or whatever church you go to is, is not it. You're, you're going through the motions. You're just going through the motions. Oh, I get to see these people and do the, but are you setting the intention as you go? I'm intentionally getting dressed. I'm intentionally showering before. I'm intentionally showing up early. I'm intentionally being present. I'm intentionally listening to the sermon. I'm intentionally being here. Why? Because I set the intention from the very beginning that I wanted to be present, alert, aware, and receptive to the information that's coming to me so I can help myself grow. That's how you stay more alert more than the 95% of the day that you're asleep with your eyes open and your mouth full and your ears covered. It starts with intentionality. It starts with not cutting yourself out, undercutting yourself. Little digs. It starts with being positive and having an outlook of I can, I will, it is done because I intended so. I'm starting to practice playing the piano. If I looked at that thing every day and said, oh, I'll never learn how to play the piano. You think I would get anywhere with it? Of course not. But it starts with every day, every time I see it, I'm like, I'm going to put another five minutes in. Do, 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 basics. Just get it in, get it in, get it in. But my intention is there. I intend to become better at this. Same thing works for diet. I intend to eat healthier. Exercise. I intend to be as healthy as I can be. Music. I intend to listen to things that are good for me, that help me be in a higher state of being. Television and movies. I intend to only watch content that's going to help me grow as a human being. Daily scheduling, I intend to make sure that my time is managed properly so that I have full presence of awareness for every part of my day. Waking up early, setting that intention first. Doing your daily practices so that you have that connection with yourself. It all starts with your intention. Now let me add my opinion on top of my opinion that I just gave. This is my double opinion. In my opinion, your intention is two parts. It's a thought and an emotion. It's not just enough to logically have a thought desire for an outcome. That's all it is. I intend for this to take place. I intend to have a beautiful day. I intend to have a very insightful rise up this Saturday. I intend for my puppy to be happy and joyful and learning new tricks, new tricks, new tricks. But those outcomes need to be catered with the very, very critical side dish of a positive emotion. It doesn't need to be positive, but positive vibration is higher vibration. It's more in tune, more in harmony, more in resonance. So let it be authenticity, let it be love, let it be joy, let it be awe, let it be excitement. Tie those two things together. Say it with your chest. As Kevin Hart says, I never thought of that before. 
It's true. Say it with your chest, not huh. Say it with your heart. Say it with your heart. I intend for anyone who gets this far and watches this, and anyone who doesn't even get this far, anyone who's watched even a second of this experience, I intend for you to be full, to be whole, to be complete, to be happy, and to just be. To be unapologetically you. And to be able to discern what is not you and what is you. That's not me. I don't even see it. it doesn't exist. I don't care. It's not me. And that will allow you to be balanced, to be present, to be aware, to be alert. This is what I intend. I do it with a smile on my face, with a loving frequency in my voice. With all of my heart, this is my intention. For anyone who watches anything that I have ever produced ever, is to feel the wholeness of themselves and know that they are complete. There's nothing that needs to be changed. And if there's a change that they want and they feel inside of themselves, the change is done. Just walk towards it and realize it, recognize it. And that's it for today. Sophia, you want to say bye to the people? Sophia, you want to say bye? <laughs> we ran like two or three miles today. There's a place called Harbor Dune Park here in Muskegon. And it has a little loop around it. I think it's about a mile and a half. And today I intended from the moment I woke up, I was like, we're doing it twice today. <laughs> and this is how you beat a Jack Russell Terrier. You got to run it out and then it's okay. But if I don't do this, oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. She is wild. Her play mode is feisty, super, super feisty. Always barking, always trying to round me up. The healer in her too. She likes to chase me like a sheep. I'm like, go play with someone else. She goes, no, I want you. I'm like, okay, fine. And then I start chasing her. She goes, oh, too much, too much, too much. No, 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 I'm scared. <laughs> hey, Sophia. We literally sleep together. Like, she gets like underneath me. It's like under my neck. Ugh. I had a dream about you last night, you know that? I said, what chair do you want to sit in? You're like, number six. <laughs> I guess this is number six. <laughs> Speak. Say goodbye. Speak. Speak. <laughs> I just woke up, you jerk. Speak. Let's get you on the mic. Sit. 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 And get you mic'd up. Ready? This is your big debut. Speak. Speak. <laughs> no, no, not interested. Speak. Speak for me. Come on, you can do it. Show the people. No, not right now. Not right now, but. Wholeness, positive vibrations, and awareness. Carry it with you throughout the entire week. Every moment of every day, even when things don't look like they're going your way, remember, mm, this is way better than it could be. <laughs> like by a long shot, by an infinite long shot. The more you can maintain that present awareness, the more you can smile and just be appreciative, be grateful. Be happy that you get to do it.
I have some friends that would say some pretty dark things at that point, but I'm going to leave it there. I would just say, just be happy that you get to do it. And if you're not happy that you get to do it, then I don't know what to tell you. Go find something that makes you happy. Like a puppy. <laughs> Sophia, Sophia, Sophia. Sophia, Sophia, Sophia. Look how big she's gotten. Look. Oh, oh. Look at you. Look at her. Look, look, look. Sophia, Sophia, Sophia. Sophia. Speak. 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 Oh, come on. Speak. Speak. Come on. Do it just once. One time. It's only because the camera's up. Speak. Speak. Hey, Sophia. Speak. 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 No, oh, come on. Give me a bigger one. Speak. Speak. There we go. <laughs> Have a great week.